What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into DLF. I am your host, Justin. Today, we are getting back to our regular start-sit videos. We have four running backs to talk through. Before we get into that, guys, if you like what we're doing, subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Follow us uh, on Twitter. Questions, comments, drop it down below. Uh, like the video, right? The, the YouTube stuff. All right, that is all we have up front. Let's get into the four guys here. The first one on the list, we are talking Ramondre Stevenson. Now, obviously, if you have not heard, Ramondre Stevenson is now the unquestioned starter in New England, right? Damian Harris is out for at least a couple of weeks, it seems like, with a hamstring injury. So that means Ramondre is going to be the RB1, right? He is the guy. He's going to see the majority of the work. And I understand Pierre Strong is there, right? Maybe Kevin Harris but it, it's Stevenson's backfield. I think we all understand that. And this week, he gets a fantastic matchup. Basically, as good as last week, like he had against Detroit, he gets the Cleveland Browns. Right now, over the last three weeks, the Browns are allowing 34.9 points a game to opposing running backs, right? Not at just one individual guy, but the entire backfield. To get there, they're allowing 125 yards a game on the ground. And it's just basically a perfect storm, right? New England is top 10 in rushing yards per game. Ramondre Stevenson just rattled off a career high against the Detroit Lions. What does this mean, right? Is, is he a must start? Is he an, is he an RB2? No, he's a top 10 running back this week. The matchup, the player, the role, all of it ties up into a guy that needs to be in your lineup. And I'm saying I am starting him over big names. Like I'm starting him over Joe Mixon, David Montgomery, Jeff Wilson, who's been good, not good enough to keep off from Andre Stevenson. And then everybody's other big question mark, which is Kenneth Walker, who should also be in your lineups. Uh, but I'm taking Ramondre Stevenson over Kenneth Walker. I'm playing him almost no matter what. Like, I don't care who my running backs are unless you have, like, CMC, JT, Saquon, Nick Chubb, like, those four. Unless you have the, all four of them, I'm probably playing Ramondre Stevenson. Like, that that's how high he is, and that's, he needs to be in your lineup. There's really... No other way to put that. Moving on to our next running back, we are talking Melvin Gordon of the Broncos. Javante is gone. Melvin was the unquestioned starter last week. Russell Wilson's banged up. Things are just fluid in Denver. You can say that. We have to watch them in prime time again against the Chargers. And like that's that's depressing, right? I don't want to watch Russ. I don't think anybody does at this point. Getting to watch Melvin Gordon, that might be a treat, right? Again, it's a revenge game. That factors in, whether we like it or not. It's always a revenge game when he goes against the Chargers. And on top of that, the Chargers defense has just been terrible against the run. I mean, we just talked about the Cleveland Browns, 34.9 a game. The Chargers are allowing 37.3 points a game to the running back right now. It's it's just nonstop big runs. The explosive run rate has just, I mean, to be punny, uh, exploded the last couple of weeks. They cannot contain running backs. So it even makes Mike Boone a sneaky flex play here. But back to Melvin Gordon. He saw 18 opportunities last week. The clear-cut lead in this backfield, right? 56% of snaps. So even with a banged-up Russell Wilson, I'm going to roll out Melvin Gordon. He's gonna get pass work if it, if it you know if it's a massive hole they're in. If they're playing with a lead, which is I think unlikely, but if they're playing with a lead, Melvin Gordon's gonna be able to run all over the Chargers. So again, I don't love the player at this point in his career, but the matchup, the role, the narrative all fit. So he be he basically becomes a, a volume play in a great matchup. That means he's slotting in as an RB two, right? The guys you're probably gonna debate with him. Najee Harris, who has just been flat out terrible. Give me Melvin over Najee as his passing snaps continue to dip. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, he's touchdown dependent. We saw what happens when he doesn't score a touchdown. I'll take the volume in Melvin Gordon, who probably carries a very similar, if not higher, ceiling. And then two guys I think he's neck and neck with, and I think it's it's a coin flip. Miles Sanders and Kenneth Walker. Again, two guys, three running backs that should all be in your lineups. You, maybe you're in a position with a loaded roster and you're deciding between the three. Uh, good luck there. Jumping to our next running back here, we are getting into Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Zeke goes up against Philly and 
just to kind of frame out Zeke's season. Um, first of all, his, his low is with <laughs> Dak Prescott in week one. But the last couple of weeks, right, he's yet the top 15 points. He's seeing a ton of rushing volume, but he's not doing a lot with it, right? Zeke is RB 36 on the season, and that's with playing five games. Like, he's been active. He's been healthy. He's just not producing. And I don't know if Philly is the game script, the matchup, where he gets right. You know, Philly has been a bottom six matchup over the last couple of weeks here. They're allowing under 20 points a game to the running back. Their offense has been on fire, which means, you know, Dallas probably is going to have to pass a lot. They're going to be trailing, or likely be, will be trailing, and that means maybe Tony Pollard. Like, it might be Tony Pollard time. Tony Pollard's seen a 9.1% target share. He's been the pass-catching back, basically. Zeke's only seen, you know, a 4.9% target share. He hasn't been over two targets in a game. I just don't love the idea of playing Zeke this week, right? Good player. We know that. He's a better real-life running back right now than he is in fantasy. He means a lot more to Dallas than he does to your roster. So he's a flex, but I don't want to start him. Like, I'm not excited to put Zeke into my lineup. Again, he's a volume play right now, and it's crazy to think. He's in the tier with, like, Cam Akers, Tyler Algier, uh, maybe Antonio Gibson, depending what you think of that role there, Brian Robinson, like all of those guys are just, yeah, we're probably going to touch the ball a little bit. We might find the end zone, but the ceiling is not great. So Zeke, sit him down if you can. You might not be able to though. I mean, that's just the nature of running backs right now. Next guy and the final one on our list, it is Travis Etienne. And if you watched the Dynasty Stock Report video from Wednesday, you know what we think of James Robinson. So obviously if we're down on Robinson, spoiler, uh, or up or we're in on Travis Etienne, you know, he's basically slowly but surely taking that role. It took a couple of weeks, but this is what we anticipated, what a lot of people expected. He's out snapped James Robinson the last two weeks. He's out produced him uh, the last two weeks. He's seen more touches. He's again, put up more yards. It's just been kind of bad for James Robinson the last two weeks, whereas Etienne is playing 53% of snaps. He's running 54% of routes compared to 32% for James Robinson, and that's a big part of why you see Etienne with six targets, Robinson with two, and again, just factoring in the ceiling, the floor, that's why Etienne's is so much higher. So Travis Etienne against Indy, you know, what does that mean? What does the matchup look like? Well, Indy's middle of the road, 24.3 a game over the last three weeks here. And basically, it's not anything you're afraid of, but it's not like, wow, it's a smash spot, right? I think the coaching staff is just realizing Etienne's better. He, he's just been more explosive. He's quicker. He's more dynamic. Is James Robinson going to go away? Of course not, right? He's going to have a role here. But I think this could balloon up to 60-40 instead of 53-40, uh, which is funny enough. But... I think that that's where we're at. So ETN slots in as a low-end RB2 with significantly higher upside because he carries that home run ability, right? He's a guy that has been breaking multiple 10-yard runs, multiple 15 to 20-yard catches. He's just explosive. He's dynamic. I want him in my lineup if I can find a way to get him there. But again, right, you, you don't have to force him there. I think if you want to wait another week, that is fine as well too. So when you're looking at guys to play him over, uh, well, James Robinson, I think, I lean that way right now, and I'm going to continue to go that way until snaps, or if ever, snaps flip back to Robinson's side. Um, I'll play him over Tony Pollard, uh, and then he's probably similar to A.J. Dillon, Kareem Hunt, right? There's those kind of 1B, 1A, 1B in an offense type of players with touchdown upside. That's where he slots in. I prefer ETN over both, but it's really a coin flip. All right, guys, that is all we have for you. Again, if you like what we're doing, Subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, YouTube stuff, you get it. As always, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.